Welcome back to... I didn't think about the fact that I was going to need a needle for each one of these because reusing lock picking tools is apparently not a thing. Um, how many needles do I have? I do have needles, don't I? I guess they're... Huh. Okay, I think there were probably more pressing things to open than... than the those lockers. So... Where, wait, where was that? I saw... Oh, here. Okay, let's open the barn. The barn door is, un is locked. You definitely picked the complicated lock. Go inside. Oh, that's a lot of gra there's a lot of grain here. If you ever need a lot of grain, you know where to find it. You got a perk, unlimited grain. Wow. Lots of fertilizer. All right, am I about to get a bunch of needles? Yep. Sweet, this is what I needed. Perfect, I'm glad I did this. Could have done this out of order. Would have been pretty, pretty rough. Coil of barbed wire hanging from a nail here. Huh. Bag of mixed grain. All right, well maybe we can now make some grain flakes. It's combination, uh, uh, load it up. All right, you pour the bag of grain into the machine. The grain the grains are neatly sorted into three separate hoppers. Do some cooking. This machine is complicated, but the controls look pretty simple. There are three labeled grain hoppers, a lever on each of them to dispense a mixture of grain into a mixing chamber below, a crank for running the mixer, and a valve, valve labeled start over. The mixing chamber is currently uh, empty. Well, I got that book. Hold on. Recipe reads four parts barley, one part oats, three parts spelt, 91 PSI, eight minutes at 640 degrees. That's utterly insane four barley one oats three spelt turn the mixing crank you turn the mixing crank your view of the grains in the mixing chamber blurs as it begins to spin at an implausible rate with a startling ka-chunk, hidden parts of the machine spring to life. The glass window of the mixing chamber becomes fogged with steam as the grain is mixed into dough. A few moments later, the dough is expelled as a soft, warm lump. You got an item, multi-grain dough. Well, okay, what was the next part of this? The giant glob of dough that you made in the Kellogg Ranch kitchen. Um, 91 PSI. Insert your dough. Look at the control. They consist of a pressure gauge, four unlabeled buttons, and a sign that says max press 80, 181. The pressure needle is at 81 PSI. Do I have to make new dough every time I screw this up? Red button. Red button. Green button. Oh, okay. That's set, reset it. So five. Oh, this is easy. Okay. There we go. Take your dough and go home. You grab your dough and leave. As you're leaving, you wonder if the dough is leavened. Got an item multi... Oh. Wait, did I read that wrong? Press to 91 PSI, right? Ninety-one PSI. Oh, is, do I need to do yellow button to end it? Yeah, okay. Compress the yellow button and the machine slowly compresses the dough you've stuck inside it. When the machine is finished, you're left with some perfectly pressed dough. You've got an item, flattened multi-grain dough. Grab your dough and leave. As you're leaving, you wonder if the dough is leavened. Very funny. Okay, eight minutes at 640 degrees. Plop your dough into a metal tray, helpfully provided, and slide it into the slot in the oven. There are only two knobs, one for temperature and one duration. Decide to turn the knob in order from left to right. 
Temperature knob is on the left, so you'll turn that one first. Are you paying attention? There will be a quiz later. First, the temperature knob. 640 degrees. 8 minutes. Set the time knob to 8 minutes and wait for the oven to finish. The oven dings, and a perfectly cooked tray of toasty flakes emerged from the slot. Got an item, Kellogg Grain Flakes. They're great. Wonderful. This is a bowl of pressed grain flakes you baked according to Kellogg's recipe. Normally you'd be proud of yourself for doing something like that, but these look like they probably taste pretty bad. Purifies your guts. What does that mean? Does that empty my stomach? Can't bring yourself to eat these boring looking flakes. Didn't Kellogg say something about needing your glands to be pure before you can purify your guts? Maybe that's what's stopping you. Impure glands. That sounds right. Oh boy, we gotta go to the gym. <sighs> I do have a bunch of... Fuck it. I spent the XP to do this. I might as well go for it. Cowboy chef's hat. Sugared pork balls, peppermint drops, Kellogg Ranch workout regimen. Well, that helps for my next thing. Only thing inside is dusty old diary, hot secrets. Piss you, you, you pick up the diary and blow off some of the dust. The cover says the diary of Blank Smith. The first name has worn away, but you can tell it was longer than seven letters. Sadly, the contents aren't particularly juicy. The author joined Kellogg's health program because she'd had several relatives with poor health and wanted to preserve her own. She found the ranch to be pretty boring, but appreciated the lack of anything much else to do gave her plenty of time to spend knitting, which was her favorite hobby. The last entry mentions Kellogg's death, rumored but unconfirmed to be due to a brain aneurysm caused by outrage at hearing a dirty joke, but, and that the author was returning home. Guess she forgot the diary when she left. Not particularly hot after all. Pick the lock. Needles and thread. Five needles. Perfect. So I'm only gonna be down like actually I'll be in the in the in the black for this one because I got three or four from the barn, and I'm gonna spend seven total here. So eight versus yeah. Bottle of laudanum. Oh, there's my pants and headband. Alright, then I can do that other quest. Is there something... Uh, I thought there was something else. No, I guess maybe it's in the other... Twenty-seven drams. Um, I guess yeah. I don't know. Oh well. Hold on. Let me read this um, workout regimen. I guess that's not gonna tell me. Okay, maybe that's just for fun. What's up with the gymnasium? Your body is still wrong. Thanks. Really appreciate that. Uh, actually, we should look at these anyway. Oh, they make you, huh? That's pretty good. What did we get here? Spell damage. Put it on your hat. The skin of the fire moccasin is used to make glove linings for colder climates. The fact that a fire moccasin is exactly the same size as a finger is one of nature's most convenient coincidences. Put it on your hat to add 20% hot resist. Huh. Is that something you can remove? Put it on a different hat? I don't know. Okay. Um, oh, what was the... 
warm up stretching, two reps of lung expansion, equilibrium maintenance stretching, skeleton vibration, three, three reps, cool down stretching. Stretch master, lung flex, fibromatic skeletal agitator. All right. So it's. Uh, it's just one of each, and then two lungs and three vibrations. Strap yourself into the machine and allow it to inflict some warm up stretches on you. This machine pulls too hard, which promptly yanks one of your shoulders out of its socket. Ow, ow, ow. Did I do that wrong? Was I not supposed to re-up it on it? Was I just supposed to walk away? Okay. It's the lung flex. Suck on the blast hole. Suck on the blast hole sounds... It's not even dirty. It's just questionable. You po put your mouth on the blast hole and turn the valve on the side of the machine. A blast of air inflates your lungs. Feels good. Suck again. Another blast of air stretches your lungs out even more. Feels great. All right, stretch again. Get back into the stretcher and when it's done twisting you around, you feel more balanced than you did before. Keep going. No, we're gonna get rattled three times. Strap yourself in. You strap yourself into the machine and turn it on. Your skeleton vibrates inside you. It feels great. Keep going. Your skeleton vibrates even more, revealing bones and muscles you didn't even know you had by making them feel amazing. Keep going. Your skeleton undergoes a cathartic third round of vibration. Every molecule of your body is now exactly where it's supposed to be. All right. And we'll stretch one last time. You strap yourself into the stretching machine for a nice relax and cool down while you feel great. But my body is still wrong. Thanks, Kellogg. Um, that didn't change anything. But can I eat my cereal now? Uh, oh, there we go. Maybe we talk to him. Whoa, uh, hello, hello. You're a ghost, huh? Yes, it does appear so. And alas, without me here to instruct him in my regimen of purity, all my patients have fled. It's probably not exactly why. They're likely out ravaging the countryside and their own bot and their own bodies. One cannot have purity of the soul without purity of the body, you know. What's this whole purity kick about anyway? My threefold path to the elimination of cor corrupting influences. Would you like to hear about it? Sure, lay it on me. It is fascinating that um, they've deliberately and understandably omitted the religious as aspect of uh, Kellogg's whole spiel, or at least up till now. Let's see. The first step I call purity of the glands. One must rid oneself of all romantic and sexual desires and cease all self-polluting activities. Like what? Smoking cigars? Well, yes, but I'm speaking of more, you know, nighttime activities alone. What? Anyway, that's the first step. <laughs> okay, what's the second step? The second step of purity is purity of guts. This is accomplished through frequent cold water enemas. Yikes and the consumption of wholesome nu and nutritious grain flakes manufactured through my personal scientifically developed recipe. What makes them any different from any other breakfast cereal? Did you not hear me? The recipe is, sci so the recipe is scientifically developed. All right, what's the third step then? The final step is purity of muscles. I've de developed an extensive exercise regimen featuring several workout machines I have invented myself. Neat. And all of this together, what was it? My regimen eliminates corrupting influences from the body, thus purifying the body, mind, and soul. Well, that sounds like a good result to shoot for. And it works? Certainly does. Why just look at me? You're dead. Only coincidentally. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm getting from this is that I probably need to sleep and purge all of these status effects before I and then come back, or eat, then eat the cereal, then do the, the, the regimen. Unless I'm just supposed to sit here. 
or I'm supposed to sleep in the dormitory or something? I don't suppose that's the case, right? I think, I don't think, hmm. Well, that's two different things I need to clear up. Um, hmm. Maybe I should go sleep. Maybe I should grind and then sleep. I think I'll do that. Maybe? I don't know. I haven't decided. I guess you'll find out next time.